What's up guys, I'm back working on the Yaris. We're gonna overhaul the suspension and yet again get it all dialed in. So let me show you what I've got. Cusco is a sponsor of the TRD series. They sent me this beefy front sway bar, this not so beefy rear sway bar, and these pillow toppers for the front struts. These solve a very interesting problem, but I'll get into that in a bit because I've got some other parts as well. I've got some replacement parts from BC Racing, including the driver front strut and some new front springs that are at a different spring rate. How did I figure out that I needed new front springs in the first place? Well, let's look at the math. So figuring out which springs are going to be right for your car comes down to spring frequency. And this is a relatively simple math problem, but to simplify it even further, what it is, is a ratio between how much your spring compresses and decompresses and how much weight you're actually putting on that corner. My goal for spring frequency was to land between 1.5 and 2.5 hertz. This is the most made up number on here because what frequency you actually want is very much determined by what kind of racing you're doing, what other people have experienced. And this is just kind of a ballpark number that seemed to fit with the type of driving that I'm doing. Hopefully it's right. This is my first time doing it. So this is the corner balance information from the last time we got the car weighed and corner balanced with me in the car. You can see that the front is definitely heavier than the rear with the driver front being the heaviest and the passenger rear being the lightest. This is where we did our battery relocation. So that swung this a little bit to make it more even, but still the car is very front heavy. So what we ended up with doing the math, I was actually kind of close when I originally chose the springs of 5K in the rear and 9K up front. What we ended up with was the low end of our goal would have been 5K up front and 3K in the rear, and that's very close to what the teen springs were, but those were a little too soft. So the higher end of our spring frequency, 2.5 Hertz, came out to 5K in the rear and 8K up front, which is really close to what I have right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change out these 9K springs for 8K springs. That should be a balanced car, getting a balanced suspension, getting those sway bars on and getting those coilover toppers on is going to pretty much eliminate all the excuses I have for suspension. And there's gonna be no reason that this shouldn't be performing as well as it can. Uh, the only reason will be my driving. Um, so let's go eliminate some excuses. So right now I'm gonna focus on the rear sway bar because it is rainy, it is cold, and I don't wanna do all that much today. Cusco sway bars don't have adjustability, but this rear bar is not as stiff as the white line bar that I used to have, so it shouldn't develop the same oversteer issues. Okay, that's one part down, and one, two, three, four, five to go. I mentioned that these little toppers are solving a problem with the Yaris suspension. Normally, with a set of coilovers, you might have two or three bolts at the top hat that go through the top of the strut tower. The way the Yaris works is it's kind of like a top piece and a bottom piece that are like very, very large washers. It's basically this big. And then this is the bottom half that goes under the body in the wheel well on top of the coilover. The problem is that with the OEM suspension, this bit is metal, but this piece is a rubber bushing. And now the suspension is so stiff that the actual flex is coming from that rubber bushing, not from the spring. So I need a solid mount. That way, everything about the spring rate is coming from the spring itself. And it's not soft and saggy and just having this is going to make the suspension that little bit more predictable. And with the slightly softer springs, we should get 
a very balanced setup. Now I don't want to mess too much with my alignment, so I'm going to leave the steering rack and tie rods connected. The idea is to drop the front subframe enough that I can sneak the sway bar out the back. So I guess when I got the steering rack replaced on this car two years ago, they must have disconnected the sway bar because it was held on by three bolts and a nut. The new sway bar is 26 millimeters. That is a 36% increase over the stiffness of the OEM bar. There's no adjustability, but this little increase should match up with what we're getting from our rear bar. And since we were already pretty happy with the balance, this should just reduce roll overall. Okay, and now for the easiest part threading this new sway bar in. Oh boy. How the hell did I get the other one out? So a little bit of good news, bad news. Um, good news is I don't need to change the steering rack bushings because the steering rack bushings are fine. Bad news is, where are my steering problems coming from if it's not the steering rack bushing? So what's happening is if I jerk the wheel hard to the left and then put it center, the wheel's center. But then if I jerk the wheel hard to the right and then put it center, it's slightly off. So it, it's like something squishing somewhere in this process and uh, I don't know. I thought it was the steering rack bushing shifting from left to right, but uh, it turns out it's not. But we'll solve the steering problems later. Right now, I gotta pull out this strut and hopefully not the full coilover because that would throw off our alignment. And actually, I don't even need to uh, disconnect this because with the subframe dropped, this is now low enough that I think I can get everything about the coilover off that I need to here. So this is the old bushing for the top of the coilover. This went in the engine bay and this went underneath in the wheel well and they kind of sandwiched the metal like that. Now we're going to be replacing it with this guy which is multiple metal pieces and then this center that threads right onto the coilover. That's going to go on the top of the shock and then this will be on the engine bay side and lock down and now I'll have a solid connection that doesn't use any rubber or anything like that so the actual flex in the suspension will come from the springs not from this guy. The reason I'm replacing the core is because the damping adjustment is broken. So I started pulling all the parts off of the threaded core noting where everything was but once I had it free I started to notice a difference between the two. Uh, hi, I was calling for tech, actually. Oh, okay, sorry, I thought, um, yeah, forgot time zones. Okay, uh, alright. You want to know the, what the most annoying part is? Is that that new inner core was the only reason that I needed to mess up my alignment. And if I hadn't had to pull that out, uh, we could have pretty much kept the same alignment and, uh, I wouldn't have to spend money getting it real in. So the old core is going back in. I might not have damping adjustment, but at least they'll be the same size as the other side. I don't know if the valving is different with this larger one, so I want to make sure that it's at least balanced. Okay, so setback number eight billion. Um, the uh, Cusco top hats are acting a little weird. Um, this one came all the way up and uh, is able, I'm able to see the top of the coilover through it. This one 
not so much. It's barely coming up past the uh, actual nut here. So what I'm thinking might be happening is because the subframe's still disconnected uh, from doing the sway bar, it might just be that like the actual strut can't rise up all the way because some bolts are in the way or something like that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reconnect the subframe because that is all done. Then see if uh, it does what it's supposed to. Even with the subframe fully reconnected, I couldn't reach the damping adjustment. So I decided to button everything up and come back to it another day. Oh, okay, so day three of working on suspension. I think I figured out the problem. I'm gonna go in and uh, see if I can fix it. I've also got a tow bar for the front of the Yaris, so we're gonna install that as well. By the way, if you're unsure why it takes so many days to do a project like this, um, the Yaris is now stored at uh, my cabin up in Big Bear, uh, and that's two hours away from home, and I don't have a bed up here yet, so it's four hours of driving any day I want to work on this, so, you know, there's not actually a lot of time in the day to really work. But we're gonna get it done. So let's, let's get to it. Okay, so when I was trying to figure out what was going on with the suspension, I found this little spacer. The thing that tipped me off is that I only found one of these, so I figured the other one might have accidentally ended up on the passenger side suspension. Pulled it apart, and I found this. Look at that. Looks like that was our problem. We uh, put the spacer on one side and not the other, which accounts for the difference in height. So now we can put it back together and everything should work. So with the spacer removed, we can now get to our damping adjustment on both sides. It looks like everything is where it should be, so we can button this up and get the car back on its wheels. The next thing we're going to do is install the front tow bar, because with the new suspension, the Yaris is too low to use with a dolly trailer. We're going to bolt this right to the front bumper, which is not normally recommended, but with lots of safety chain and a car that only weighs 2,000 pounds, we should be fine. The hardened steel of the bumper is really tough to drill through, so you might need to pull out some heavy duty tools or call a local shop to help you with it. While I was working on the tow bar though, I noticed yet another problem with our coilovers. Okay, uh, it turns out I'm not as done as I thought. The Yaris is back up in the air because there's a problem that I don't want to be having. To illustrate it, I pull off the pillow ball from one side and I've got this strut that didn't have a spring on it that we didn't end up installing but this illustrates perfectly the issue. So this is the actual shock absorber and I've got two different kinds of spacers. This uh, short, thick boy and this long, skinny boy. If I put the long, skinny boy on there, that doesn't actually stop this from moving because it fits right down the collar. So problem that I have is if I do it with no spacer and I tighten this down all the way, it still moves. If I do it with one short fat boy spacer, then this still moves, but nowhere near as much. So if I do it with long skinny boy spacer, short fat boy spacer, and then tighten it all down, it all works. Everything is tight and this pillow ball isn't going anywhere. The only problem is the threads aren't exposed for me to put my damping adjustment on the top. So I have no damping adjustment all of a sudden, which realistically right now I don't have on the driver's side anyway, but I don't want to lose it on the passenger side as well. That was the whole point of redoing this. The answer I've found is to do two short fat boy spacers. That is the exact amount of thread I need to put my damping adjustment on and there's no play. The only problem is I only have two of these spacers and I would need four to do both sides. So either I'm going to need to find something to uh, replace some of these spacers or I'm going to need to wait and order something that fits. So let's see what we got. Mm -hmm. 
With a quick trip down to the local hardware store, we found spacers that fit. The only problem is these are made of bronze, and if I learned anything from playing Age of Empires, bronze is not as strong as steel. But the spacers fit, and they're doing the job just fine. If I wasn't working with a 2,000 pound car, I'd honestly be a little worried, but that is the benefit of working with such a light and simple platform. <sighs> okay, so suspension is figured out. The spacers uh, will hopefully hold. Um, if you used bronze in suspension before, let me know. It's only about 700 pounds per corner. I think it'll be fine, but for now, We've got to get a tow bar on and uh, then take this down to an alignment. We got down to Chetworks and Robert was able to align it with no issues. He is really good at making a front wheel drive car fast. Okay, the Yaris is all done. Now I just need to... The alignment's all done. We raised the ride height a little bit because I was rubbing just a bit uh, last time we went out. And uh, honestly, towing this is gonna be just a little bit easier with the ride height a little lifted. I don't have to worry as much about what I'm going over uh, and everything. You know, flat towing is different for sure. Eight wheels on the ground. And we got a new corner balance. We really dialed that in, but I am so, so close to this being truly 2,000 pounds. It is 2,009 pounds. And that is honestly a little less fuel, and this would be sub 2,000 pounds. If I had taken out the, um, the, if I had taken out the towing lights, I would have lost two or three pounds. If I had taken out the fire extinguisher, I could have lost, you know, three, four pounds. If I had taken out, you know, just, it's so close, it's so close. I just wanted to see the number. It doesn't even matter at this point, it really doesn't, because what matters is the weight with me in the car, and I'm probably like 10 pounds heavier than when I started this. Anyway, I need to lose some weight. Uh, so I, I later, literally, I just want to see the number, uh, but we didn't see it this time. Maybe next time I'll go down and just pull the passenger seat out. Uh, but for now we need to just, uh, load this up because we are going racing tomorrow. Oh, are you expecting me to cut to that? No, no, no. That's in the next video. You get to see that in the next video which means I'm definitely making another video. So check it out. Thanks.